Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. So in today's video lecture, we will discuss the stolper Samuelson theorem, which was given by Wolfgang Stolper and Paul Samuelson. So the theorem states that as the relative price of a commodity increases, either due to trade or imposition of tariff, the relative reward of the factor intensive in production of that commodity increases. So uh, let's take an example. Uh, suppose there are two nations and they start trading with each other. And due to the trading, the relative price of commodity X increases. And also, let's say that the commodity X is intensive in labor. That is, it requires more labor to produce the commodity X. So when both nations start trading and the price of commodity in X increases, then the factor that is intensive in production of X, that is labor, then the relative reward or relative share of labor in the total income increases. So this is the basic statement of the Stockless Emerson theorem. And there is a necessary condition for Stoplos-Emerson theorem to hold true. The theorem will only hold true when the Hesker-Olin theorem, this Hesker-Olin theorem also holds true. Uh, so if this Hesker-Olin theorem fails, if this fails, then this uh, Stoplos-Emerson theorem will also fail. And that, that case is shown by Metzler paradox. That will be altogether a different video. Here we will only discuss the stoppers Hamilton theorem. Now, given this definition, in gen generally in the topics of international economics, we first need to set up a framework in which the economy is operating. So first we will discuss the assumptions that we will deal with while understanding this doppler samuelson theorem so the first assumption is that there are two nations nation one and nation two uh, there are two factors of production labor and capital there are two commodities or two goods x and y so it is basically a two into two into two model here we have two nations, that is simply two nations, two factors of production and two commodity. We have a two into two into two framework. Further, the good, uh, uh, there is one more assumption. The nation one, it is labor, labor abundant. It is labor abundant. And this nation two, it is capital abundant. Now further, the commodity X is intensive in labor. That is, it requires more labor to produce commodity X. And commodity Y is intensive in capital. That is, commodity Y requires more of capital. Now further, technology of production is same in both countries. That means the production possibility frontier will be identical for both the countries. Tastes are also identical in both the countries. That means I saw the indifference curve will be same in both the countries. These two assumptions are just for simplification. Then there is perfect competition in all markets. Here by all markets, we are implying in the commodity market and in the labor market as well. We see perfect competition. There is perfect factor mobility. That, that means labor and capital are perfectly mobile from production of one commodity to the another commodity. There are constant returns of scale and the crucial assumption, which I would like to change the color, the crucial assumption is there is always full employment of resources. This assumption plays a big role in explanation of this theory that we will deal later. But you should remember there is full employment of resources. And last not the least, there is no transportation cost. So in total, there are 12 assumptions. Here I have written 11. I forgot to put this one, the 12th one, that nation one is labor abundant and nation two is capital abundant. So this is the framework with which we will try to understand this 
Stolfos and Wilson theorem. So let me erase it for you so that we can move on to the next slide. I hope you get these assumptions, the basic framework that you have. Okay, so now once we have this framework, we will move on to the model. So we will try to understand this with the help of Edgeworth box. So this is a Edgeworth box, rectangular Edgeworth box. Here we are on this left lower corner. We have commodity X like from this direction. We will see the commodity X and on the top right corner we have commodity Y like in this direction we will observe commodity Y. Like we will use these directions to see what happens. Okay. Further uh, on the X axis on the X axis we have labor and on the Y axis we have capital. Okay, now in this Edgeworth box, we will draw the contract curve and the isocon in case of autarky. So here in this diagram, this line AB, this non-linear line AB, this, this line is your contract curve. So this and so this line here is your contract curve and this this point C point C is your autarky point that is the point when nation is not trading so so basically what is happening here is the x1 x1 is the iso point of commodity x and Y0 is the isoquant of commodity Y. And at the point C, they are tangent. So when the nations are, and this is the Edgeworth box of nation one. This Edgeworth box is drawn from the viewpoint of nation one. Okay. So when the nations are not trading, so in nation one, at we are producing and consuming at point C. So we are producing X0 amount of commodity X and Y0 amount of commodity Y. Because these are the isoquants which show the number, like amount of the commodities produced. And C is the autarky point. Since C is your autarky point, and one more thing uh, crucial to understand here, uh, crucial to understand here, the slope of the line AC, slope of this line, AC, this dotted line, this slope. If I say this angle as alpha, then then the slope of this line in this angle is sorry not from this side slope uh, is measured from x-axis so slope from here if i say is beta so what i'm saying here is that slope of line ac slope of line ac is equals to slope of line ac is equals to the Capital labor ratio in good X and 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 slope of line BC is equals to capital labor ratio in good y so this is the scenario the slope of this line that is given by 10 alpha and slope of this line that is given by 10 beta is the capital labor ratio in good x slope of ac and slope of bc is capital labor ratio in good this commodity y okay so now as the nations start trading with each with each other, we will see what will happen. Uh, so, as the nations trade, uh, definitely according to the Heshkar Olin theorem, since nation one is labor abundant, it is labor abundant, and nation two is capital abundant and commodity X is labor intensive and commodity Y is capital 
capital intensive so as trade starts taking place nation 1 is specialized in production of commodity x and nation 2 will specialize in production of commodity y so as nation 1 will st uh, start specializing in x the isocon of oh, this will shift from x naught to somewhere on this point here x1 somewhere here and definitely due to scarcity of resources y1 should be here like we will move to some point here we'll see more clearly on the next slide so like as nation starts uh, trading with each other we will have new isocons like this x1 and y1 and d and d will be your and d will be your new trade uh, equilibrium with trade i'll write it as So, this D point will be your equilibrium with trade. Okay. And yeah, one more thing I forgot to tell you. Here, this slope of this line, this is the relative price. This P naught and P naught. This is a relative price. What is relative price? Relative price is nothing, just Px by Py. So this P naught, P naught line shows your relative price at autarky point. Okay. So now coming back here. Uh, after the autarky point as trade starts, D will be a new equilibrium with trade and X1 is the higher isocount. See, the production at X1 is more than X0, okay? And Y0 will be a new isocon for commodity. Y1 will be a new isocon for commodity Y and X1 new isocon for commodity X. Uh, so, a new trade point is point D. Now, at this new trade point, at this new trade point, you will see that capital labor ratio have changed. So, yeah, and at this new trade point, uh, your price ratio is this. P1. Here it was like this. Okay, this is P1. This is P1, P1. Here it is P0. And see, slope of here, one more thing. Slope of P1 greater than slope of P0. So this is the scenario. So basically what this is implying is the relative price has increased as trade start taking place, relative uh, as trade starts taking place, relative price of commodity X has increased from P0 to P1. Also, also, we will see, also let me still is it. Also, the capital labor ratio. See, now this, now this D is your new trade point. At this new equilibrium, the capital labor ratio is given by slope of this line, AD. Slope of AD is the capital labor ratio in commodity X. And then slope of this line, BD, this line, is the capital labor ratio in commodity Y. So what do we observe here? We have two observations. First one, slope of a D is greater than slope of A C. Okay. Definitely you can see slope of A D is greater than slope of A C. Now what does this imply? It see the slope of these lines shows the capital labor ratio. Okay, it implies that capital labor ratio increases as price increases from P note to P1 that we have shown previously. Capital labor ratio in good 
x increases as price increases from p0 to p1 and again mm, here this is your let write properly here slope of this line this is p0 your original relative price and this is p1 so this is this has increased so it wait it is implies it implies that capital liberation good x increases as price increases from p0 to p1 and similar conclusion we are getting from this side commodity wise side we can see let me be clear this is the slope of bc and this is slope of bd so slope of bd is greater so slope of where is bd is greater than slope of bc let me put it in red color okay now what does it implies it it implies that capital labor ratio in good y increases as price increases from p not to p y so what do we see here capital liberation good y also increases so what we can conclude is as prices increase increase due to trade as relative price see wherever i have written price it's relative price so as relative price increase due to trade the capital labor ratio also also increases now now due to increase in capital labor ratio the productivity of labor productivity of labor also increases because see as you will give more and more capital to labor its productivity will increase so like capital labor ratio directly proportional to productivity of labor since the productivity of labor increases what will happen wages will increase see the wages will increase now with assumption of full employment now we are given that there is full employment so with the assumption of full employment it is now we are given that there is full employment so we increase in wages so there is increase in wages and everybody is employed so the share of wages will increase so this is what we have proved here okay let me re quickly revise it as the price increases from this p0 to p1 a capital labor ratio that we have seen the slope of ac and ad capital labor ratio also increases as the price increase k by l also increase due to this increase in k by l the productivity of labor increase and since productivity of labor increase the wages will increase now combining this with the assumption of full employment we can say that share of wages also increase it is simple to understand we are saying that wages have increased and also we are saying that everybody is fully employed so see 
everybody is fully employed before at wage 40 and now everybody is fully employed at wage 50 so definitely the share of wages will increase so this is what we conclude as the price of the commodity increase the share of wages will increase and see this is nothing just the conclusion of stop loss emerson theorem but the theorem says as the price increase here the price increase from p0 to p1 the reward of the factor intensive in the production of commodity will increase so the theorem says as the price of a relative price of a commodity increase then the reward of factor that is intensive in the production of that commodity will increase see here the relative price of x is increasing from p0 to p1 and x is a labor intensive commodity so the theorem suggests that then the uh, reward of labor that is wage then the share of wages should increase. So what we have proved here, as the price increases from P0 to P1, our conclusion is wage, share of wages increases. So this is nothing, just the simple proof of stop loss Emerson theorem. So see what happens, guys, you know the intuitive proof, but this is the technical proof of the theorem. You just simply have to do this. You have a contract curve, you have your tarky point C, here you have the capital labor ratio and your equilibrium price. Now you move on to this new uh, new equilibrium with trade. Here you have this price ratio which has increased and your capital labor ratio which has also increased. Now increased capital labor ratio implies higher productivity. Higher productivity turns into higher wages. Higher wages as full employment gives you increased share of wages. This is the simple proof of the stolper Emerson theorem. Okay. So let me erase this for you. I hope uh, it is clear now and you find this video helpful so I will end this lecture now and I will give you a clean diagram so that you guys can copy it so here is your clean diagram uh, simply explaining again here point C is your autarky point and uh, relative prices P0 P0 when the trade starts taking place, you will move to point D and your relative prices will be P1, P1. And P1, P1 is greater than P0, P0. Okay. So your relative price has increased. And your capital labor ratio shown by the slope of these dotted lines also increased. Because slope of AD is more than slope of AC. And similarly, slope of BD is more than slope of BC. So capital labor ratio increases. Because the capital labor ratio increases, your productivity increases. Productivity increases. Your wage increases. Your wage increases combined with full employment. Your share of wages increases. That is the simple proof of the Stolper-Samuelson theorem.